Final Jeopardy category. City name origins. Take your wages. Well, another Jeopardy episode, another totally worthless late daily double wager. Welcome to the final wager. I'm Keith Williams and Beth really had to go for everything there. 14 to now. She could add a lot more. She could be in position to win if Andrew gets this wrong. Instead, she has to get it right. Because John Paul is sitting back here with 12 2, and uh, he's forcing her to wager everything. But we'll see what the numbers look like. Lost my basket. Uh, speaking of city name origins, I had no idea that Venezuela was named for Venice. That's kind of cool. And that whole background story. Also pretty neat. Well, let's see here. So Beth is within two thirds of Andrew's score. She could wager nothing, and uh, hope it works out for her. But uh, twenty-eight four, eight thousand. Uh, wait, what am I doing here? Twenty-four. Yeah, eight thousand. Right. So Andrew's got to wager eight thousand one. If he's wrong with the eight thousand wagers, it'd be twelve four. Just tough luck for John Paul because he has to wager at least two hundred. So he might as well go all in. Now Beth, if she's feeling uh, lucky here, she could go for uh, 1,800, and in fact, this might be her best range, because I would say the odds are better that everyone misses. Well, I don't know. Would you rather stake your luck on everyone missing, or on <clears throat> uh, you being the only two of yourself and the leader to get it right? And it's a tough choice. Either way, Beth should wait at least 10,200, but of course, I prefer 14.2. Uh, I don't have too much else to say here. I guess if uh, Andrew's afraid, I'll put 8,200 here on oh, Prince. And it's been a crappy year in a lot of ways, especially with celebrity deaths. Uh, as A200, that's in case John Paul Wager is zero. It's still forcing him to get it right. Um, I guess he, uh, Andrew could wager something smaller in case Beth goes for small, but I see no reason for her to do that. Well, I do see a reason for her to do that. I don't know why I'm talking in circles right now. Uh, anything else? Oh, yeah, that, uh, <laughs> the question on the sheep's head. I knew that one because there's a neighborhood in Brooklyn called Sheep's Head Bay, and of course I always thought that it was because they took dead sheep there, and maybe the bones kept washing up on shore. And in fact, there was a place called Dead Horse Bay, near Sheep's Head Bay, where that was the case. It was old glue factory, and uh, they would bury the horses there, and they'd also use it as a landfill. And now all of the, uh, the glass and uh, toilets and uh, prescription bottles and things from the 19th century are all on the shore. It's really cool to go there at low tide. But I knew from my research of Brooklyn history that Sheep's Head is, in fact, a fish, and a very ugly fish at that. Not one that I would want to see on my plate. I'm not a really big fish fan, but I think it's very similar to a flounder in that it has uh, both of its eyes on the same side of its head. Not the prettiest looking thing. All right, uh, this seems like a more, well, I thought yesterday's category was going to be good for me, but it didn't turn out too well. We'll see if Andrew becomes our first five-timer in... Find out more 23 weeks. <laughs> Six Category months plus. City name, origins, American city. Here's the clue, players. This city that's home to an NFL team is named for an 18th century British prime minister. 30 seconds. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going there again. Sorry. Uh... I assume it's William Pitt. The Elder. Why would it just be NFL team? Green Bay? No. Um, Oakland? No. Nah, I'm gonna go with this. Oh, did we stump you guys with this one? Let's find out. John Paul, we come to you first. Did you manage to write anything down? No, I do. That's too bad. It'll cost you how much? Well, five grand, that brought you to 7,200, takes us to Beth. She had 14,200, and her response was Cleveland. No, that will cost you 14,100. You're dropping to $100 as we come to Andrew Powell. He had 20,400. His response was Abbotsford? No, the city of champions, Pittsburgh, for William Pitt the Elder. In Canada, for some reason. 
No NFL, National Football League. You lose 8,001, you have 12,399 with your remaining champion. You now have a five-day game. Very impressive still. Offer 36,201. I'll wrap up the week and have a great year tomorrow. All right, so we have broken our five-gamer drought. Congratulations, Abbotsford man, Andrew. And it uh, would have worked out well for Beth there, but, of course, it's all easy to say in hindsight. Uh, yeah, lucky that I happened to latch out of that. I don't know how you get that. I don't know why the NFL team was brought up. City of Champions, yeah, it's got other teams, too. Uh, it made it seem like it was exclusively an NFL team, which is tough. Get out of here, true car. Good to see you. Well, we've got one streak left to be broken. We just set the record with 115 straight games without a five-timer, but Andrew can break the 116-game streak we've got for six-timers tomorrow, and that'll be quite the way to finish off the week. Uh, still uh, thinking about Beth's daily double wager there. That could have uh, turned, the, turned the tide there at the end, but... You know, you don't come in prepared, you're not going to win most of the time. You might get lucky one or two games, but uh, unless you do your homework, odds are not good that you'll put together a good run. Andrew's clearly done his homework, except for hunting daily doubles toward the end of the uh, double jeopardy rounds, but maybe that'll change when you'll pick up on it. Pick up on it. Okay. That's my cue to leave, and we'll see you tomorrow right here on the final wager.